another happy guy is provisional pole sitter Bobby Labani. A fantastic lap, and already you've dodged some pretty big bullets. you got to be pretty confident. Yeah, we've still got a lot of guys that's uh, running right now that uh, could beat us, but uh, this is a great lap for us. The Interstate Pontiac was uh, stuck like glue. I mean, uh, really did uh, handle really good, and uh, we didn't. We fought a little bit of that in practice. We couldn't ever get no speed out of it, and the car was too bound up, and Jimmy made a good call, and we all talked about it, and thought about it, and made some decisions on the car that made the car better. I see you're up here continuing to watch qualifying. Is there anybody you're concerned about? This one right here. And that one right there is the 24 car of Jeff Gordon. Guys? And he should be concerned. Our trap times. Gordon was faster than him down the back wow. stretch. Gordon bumps him from the pole. How about that? Jeff Gordon, the six-time Charlotte pole winner. There's Brooke signing autographs for the fans. <laughs> <laughs> and Jeff Gordon knocks Bobby Labonte from the top spot. 185.561 miles an hour. The Gordon fans are loving it. How about that? So Jeff Gordon. Knocks Bobby Labonte from the pole. And the pole center this Sunday will be Jeff Gordon. The fastest car in practice, Jeff Gordon. By the way, Kenny Walsh ran 29.494, average speed 187.970. He's currently in fourth position. Let's go down to Dr. Jerry Punch. And Benny spoke with Jeff just a moment ago. He said, this is the car they used to set on the pole with Charlotte early in the year. They have two butt poles here, one at Darlington, one at Charlotte. This one was the car that gave him the front row at Charlotte. He said he has never won a pole here at Atlanta. And had one lap you saw him practice at the top of the charts was one wild lap where they blocked the car. He said, I'm not sure I can reproduce it. I'm going to try. But man, is it a little bit wiggly out there with the wind. He has never won a pole. His best start was second here in 96 Whoa. this race, but he's Whoa. on the provisional pole now. Wow. Whoa! Whoa! 28, 537, average speed, not 194, 274. Jeff, you can breathe now, because I know you've held your breath for about 30 seconds. That is faster than he ran in practice. 194.274 for Jeff Gordon, and he is on the provisional pole position at the moment. Thanks for being with us here at Atlanta. For Benny, Jerry, and Bill, I'm Bob Jenkins. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. There's no question. What's, we let David Smith, our team what's manager. What's Jeff Gordon doing back there? I mean, he's not even... Uh, he's not up to speed. He's coming around. He's going to throw away this lap. That's what he's going to do because it's important getting up to speed, coming to take the green flag. Okay. But Ricky Craven was 19th fastest. I think it... Uh, see, Jeff backed off. I can hear it way back here. He's going to get some heat in those tires. Uh, he's got a different uh, approach to this yeah. thing than everybody else has had. This is a Daytona-style qualifying for Gordon where he's using his first lap just to get up to speed but not to abuse those tires. I think that's the plan. He probably went out with a little bit lower air pressure, get some air pressure built up. Now he's going to come down and he'll stand on that bad boy. It's probably not going to be a good lap, but he really got through three and four coming to take the white flag, which well, is important. Yeah, well, he's got his momentum up. He wants to get a run to the flag, and this will be interesting to see how it works out. I wondered if anybody would try something like this. First lap, 24.033. 20th quickest. This will have to be the lap for Gordon. It's there too, buddy. Uh, a little slower through three and four. Tires lost some grip. And he is... It's there, he's on buddy. the pole, though. It's Quicker! There, he's buddy. on the pole. It's there. All right, now... 23.401. That's nine one thousandths faster than Steve Park. Now, if I'm a crew chief, I'm going down my driver. Oh, Throw away right. the first lap! Throw away the first yeah. lap! Yeah. yeah. This, one's, this one's for Dale, man. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think that uh, he must have been driving the car for me out there. Rockingham, thanks for watching. Take care. And who the Hutchinson device was designed by is Bobby Hutchins, who's, who works with the 29 car and the 31 car, Mike Skinner and Kevin Harvey. Jeff Gordon on the racetrack. He's got those flames on that car, Darrell. Uh, yeah, I love flames. The thing that Larry and I were talking about earlier is this is a little bit different car, I think, of what Jeff Gordon's accustomed to running here. Robbie Loomis, his crew chief, has had incredible success here with the 43 car, and so they built Jeff a car like that, and it's a little different, I think, Larry. Well, it's we talked about it a while ago, a three-quarter low snout car. But, yeah, all the success that Robbie Loomis had here with John Andretti and with Bobby Hamilton was with that type of a race car. Robbie Loomis said 
I'm used to it. And he's on the pole, so it's worked out so far. 20.126. I'm sure that but when he came here with that car, I'm sure that there were some questions in the shop about, are you sure we want to do this? <laughs> it looks good now, it looks doesn't good it? good now. They came up here and tested it against one of their conventional cars about a week ago. Well, the crowd loves it, and there's Robbie Loomis. He loves it, too. He's on the pole here at Martinsville. Here on Fox Sports, for the entire Fox Sports crew, thanks for being with us here on Fox Sports Net. And the Rangers. We're off against Jason Giambi and the A's. It all begins with this week in baseball tomorrow at 1230 Eastern and Pacific. Check the local listings for the game and start time in your area as the entire baseball season unfolds across the Fox networks. Things are heating up as the Flames come on the speedway fastest in practice. Winner of the last three in a row here, Jeff Gordon. And make no mistake about it, he's getting around this racetrack. This is the same car that he won with here the last three years, 98, 99, and 2000. Robbie Loomis said they went up to Virginia International Raceway, tested a few little, little things, happy with the race car. Here they are again with it for the fourth year in a row. That's a nice little, boy, boy, he really bounced it off the curb there. Didn't seem to upset the car too much. That's what I like about his car, Mike, is the shock package that they run on their car. He can get off the, he can get on the rumble strips and everything, get off the track, and it doesn't seem to upset the car that badly. He's going to be close through my segment up through the hills. It's going to be right there with Rusty. Seems how he gets through turn 11. Could make the difference right here. Looked pretty good off of there, and him and Rusty were close together in practice. He was a little quicker, Gordon. Can he knock Rusty off the yes. pole? He does. Yeah. By two tenths of a second, 76.842. Watch him come down through these S's. Now, see how he runs over those rumble strips, and the front of the car will come up. But the car doesn't get, out, doesn't get out from under him. It just rotates. It rolls right. It rolls left. But it's never getting that loose on him. It's not like it's out. Look at his hands in there working. <laughs> Here I come, boys. And he is working in there, I promise you. Well, it's fun to watch. Jeff Gordon is now fastest. They moved it back uh, when they did away with that exit over there. When they put that new uh, wall in back two cars to go. Here was the man that was fastest in practice. I'm sure Robbie Gordon, he's glued to that screen right now. There it is. It's green, but it jumped to red. They're off turn two. Had last to get out of that throttle just a little bit. I think about last week, I mean, he just missed the pole by hundreds. But he's lost a lot of time in three and four, gained some of it back off four, about a tenth off. Exactly a tenth. Fourteenth quickest. Just a couple of thousand so this, gonna, this is going to be close right here. It's going to be... It went green he right got then. It. He got it. He got it. Wow. New and track right record. Instant on the pole at Bristol. <laughs> New pole Man, see, that second lap was awesome. Great job. That second lap was awesome. And Daryl, what I saw there, he was able to get in that throttle, and that car it's stuck off board. the corner. That was a nice lap. We'll see you tomorrow with the Bush Race and Winston Cup practice. So long from Thunder Valley. Top 25 here, so obviously it's been a big jump for us. And one second. All of what the requests were, were from the Sharpie executives, Paul and Bob, is they wanted me on the front straightaway so they could see me from the suite as far as the pit box is concerned. So far, I did my job. Brand new pace key. Yeah, it's looking pretty sharpie, and it's looking very sharpie, guys. All right, new pole man, Jeff Gordon, has done it. 19 career starts here, his average starting spot is fifth. He gets it done at Bristol. What makes you say that? Want to know his average finishes? His first lap is a lap that does the job. 15-4-7-0. Junior was 15-4-8-2. You know, both of his two poles this season have come on short tracks here at Bristol in March, and then at Martinsville in April. So obviously it's been a big jump for us. Jeff Gordon, who scored the butt pole, and he'll lead the field with the green flag and the Sharpie 500 tomorrow night. We'll see you tonight at 8 Eastern time for the Bush Series race here on TNT. I, when I left and went up the S's, I said, this guy right here is crazy. He is crazy. And what did you say after you saw his time? I heard you said, phew. Yeah, I did. I, I could barely catch my breath because I didn't know if he beat me at first because I saw the 864, but he just tried a little bit too hard. He'd have beat me hands down if uh, he wouldn't have got those wobbles. So 
Mark, he's got a pretty good car. Mark, it's hard, too, because you only get the one lap, right? Can't correct your mistakes. Well, hey, I didn't want another lap. <laughs> you know, um, Gordon may beat us both there, but, you know, my lap wasn't perfect, but it was faster than I thought it was going to be. See, I, I thought I was hoping for 11-3, uh, even though I did run 11-1 in the test, and I ran 11-29 in Biffle's car in the test, but... And then we came back with a lot more motor. We got good stuff, got good horsepower, good cars, and uh, and Biffle got a better lap. And uh, and the 24 is capable of beating uh, both those laps. We'll see what he does here. Well, All time right. will hold their breath, Dave, That's because right. Jeff Gordon is headed for the finish line. On track now, Mike. Yeah, we're going to know here in about eight to ten seconds uh, whether Jeff Gordon's smooth or as Mark Martin puts it, just crazy by Greg Biffle. We're not trying to keep you in suspense. We've lost our uh, Sport Vision pace chase, and Gordon takes the pole. I'm going to say Greg Biffle has now lost the pole. Minute 10, 79. That breaks the old track record that Dale Jarrett actually holds by over a second. And it was a pretty smooth lap. He had, I saw one little bobble in the middle of the bus stop, but it was just to correct his angle. And uh, other than that, wow. It's going to be a tough one to beat right there. Sunday. And he's 13th best in Jeffrey, not qualifying. All right, here's the man that was fastest in practice, Jeff Gordon. Looking for his third Bristol Blood Pole Award and his third of 2003. Is it going to be enough? If he can just duplicate his practice run, he will be on the pole. He ran an 09. Ryan Newman ran a 10. Right now, still green. Oh, yeah. 14's coming up. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, so close. 15. <laughs> oh, three, eight. Get him on lap two, Jeff. Come on. We need the 14's here. Not going to happen. No, not this time. Not with Jeff Gordon, anyway. Yeah. Nice job. 15 oh, three, eight for Jeff Gordon. New leader in Bud Pole qualifying. Last three Bristol races for nice Jeff, he's qualified there, nice first, oh, first, and second. He's going to be somewhere in that range when this is all done later today. Real good, just a little bit time the first lap. We'll lose this. Careful, We'll fire up the wind tunnel again on Monday. Dave Despain and you, 9 p.m. here on Speed Channel. Jeff Gordon's last win came right here 22 races ago. He's been victorious here four times and has four buff poles. And I tell you, we talk a lot about Ryan Newman's qualifying efforts. This guy right here has matched Ryan Newman's top 10 starts in 2003 with 22, and he has three bud poles. Remember, he sat on the pole and won the race here in the spring, and this is the very car that he did it with. Tied Dale Jr. for fastest in practice. See how he's won the flat books. Close. 2069. Pretty close on to what Ryan Newman's was. Yes. It's not going to come in the first lap. The car really looks like it's rotating through the middle of the corner, good, which is the real secret here. If you can get that thing to go through the middle of the corner, he's going to be second quickest at a 2037. Pretty good first lap. Watch that light. He only needs to pick up two one hundreds to take the ball away from Jim. Green right now. Halfway down the back. There it is. Still first. See if he can get off turn four. It's going to be awfully close, guys. He picked up a lot of ground, and that's exactly what he did in the spring here coming off turn four. 20 22. He beats Dale Earnhardt Jr. by over a tenth of a second. He said he thought he had this a little bit left, and that's all he needed. And he had it. And I tell you, he was so strong coming off the corner under acceleration. For all of us at Martinsville Speedway, congratulations to Jeff Gordon, and so long. Pole sitter in four of the last five races here. I'm sorry, four of the last six. And interestingly, Larry, he has never failed to finish a Martinsville race in his entire cup career. And that in itself is a feat to be accomplished. There is no question. Being at the end of this race is a big, big key. Jeff's first lap is a 2068. That's about what Rusty ran on his get up to speed lap. But yeah, the numbers here on Jeff just phenomenal, Mike. And those 22 starts you saw, average start 6.5, average finish 8.5. 2025, I mean, that is an awesome lap.
This lap should be quicker if uh, things hold true to form. And you see our Fox tracks right there on the checkered flag that indicates the pole spot. Boy, that car just squatted and took off from turn four. It, it, those rear wheels definitely hooked up off the corner. Will he make the 19s? Don't quite think so. He actually slowed down on that oh, he did. lap. Gosh. Yep. That we've seen in a long time. And of course, the irony of that, DW, this is also the car from Lowe's Motor Speedway where he was had a good qualifying run, was eight laps down. Yeah, well, Ike Jr. always told me, boy, that car don't know where it is. <laughs> right now, it knows where it's at. Coming off turn two, looks pretty solid there, too. Yeah, he's going to be bad fast. <laughs> There's his teammate, Jimmy Johnson, going, <laughs> Jimmy says, yeah, that's good. where's he at? Where's that's he good, at? boss. That's good, boss. Can you slow down a little bit right here? His time in practice was a 37.71. That would beat his teammate right now by oh, he, a tenth and a half. He packed her in there, and it was smooth as silk. It's going to be a good lap. Yeah, he packed her down in there. This probably be a track record. Pole, but misses the track record by five one hundredths. Nevertheless, great run. It was. It's pretty. And he mirrored what he ran in practice. I like the way. I mean, turn three is the telltale. How you look when you get into turn three is how you're going to run. Listen to the fans. Some of them like it. Some of them are loud. NASCAR's premier road racer these days. He can do it. He can tippy toe around here with the best of them. I just like to see Jeff do some other kinds of road racing. You know, and I know he can't do Formula One, but I like to see him do some 24 hour stuff or, you know, and I'd like to see him drive one of those Audis. I think he'd be really good in one of those with some of those guys that run those. I think, think you just made a bunch of guys in Warren, Michigan cringe at that thought. I'm with the home of Chevrolet. Okay, okay, Corvette. I'm okay, sorry, I'm that, sorry. that'd be fine. He did run that uh, uh, all star off road rally race. Yeah, over somewhere. Right, over the pond. I mean, just look how smooth he is. I mean, he hits his marks every corner, up through the S's here. The car looks good, stays pretty nice and flat. Got through there nice. Here he comes, turn 10. This is critical. He can't heavy braking, but not too much. You'll lock up the front tires. Yeah, he got it real wide there. Little turn. I don't think he lost a lot of time there. Oh, enough to keep him wearing the pole. Just remember, he was the fastest man in practice. He'll be really upset with his simple turn 10. Boy, but he got all there was at turn 10 and a little more. I mean, he's going to be about a second faster than Bobby Labonte on this lap right here. 7597. Oh that is whip butt. Well, everybody who's run so far. And that's and, and you say what might have been. What if he had to run off turn 10? This is just this is a really, really sensitive area right here. It takes braking, but if you over brake the car, you, you actually are getting the front wheels almost sliding and you run out of racetrack. And that's as good as you can do right oh, there, yeah. running off the racetrack. I don't need it, but just think of the dominance we've seen of a particular car. Thinking back to Jimmy Johnson and how he dominated the 600, uh, some other races here recently, and uh, then Jeff leading almost the entire race at Sonoma. I'm a little bit concerned, old guys, about this race car. No flames. This, well, not only that, it sounds really different. It's just got no flames, though. It's <laughs> listen to this thing as it comes by. It's, ah. I don't do that well. We'll know here if it's pretty good or not. See what he runs on this first lap. 48 oh, 28. Yeah. That's pretty sporty. Yeah, I, I'm gonna try, I wish I could get my car to sound like that, Mike. Yeah, if he gets seven tenths, he's a pole man. Yeah, I think he's gonna be right there. I don't like to see that sparks. Uh, every time a car hits the track, it's just like hitting the brake. His time in practice, as we mentioned, he was the quickest, 47-79. You remember last weekend uh, when he was qualifying, he ran off the track on turn 10. We said, well, that's it. That's everyone his yeah, lap. It was it. <laughs> it was on the pole. It was on pole. Don't do that here. <laughs> and the thing sparking around here, that's supposed to hurt you. And this thing here, it's not even bouncing. Nah, it's yeah. just staying right there. Bottoming out like that is supposed to slow you down. He's got a billion reasons to want to win uh, the pole. I believe, of Pepsi promotion. I believe it'll be there for right now. Let's see what it 4770 just barely. It's good yeah. enough to knock Michael Walter off for the time being. Well, Larry, he didn't get as much on that second lap as I thought he would. Uh, if he'd gotten a full seven tenths, he'd be down around a 60. And I think the reason he didn't run all the way up the racetrack on that first lap, he was down about the middle of the racetrack. The lower you run on the first lap, 
the least amount you're going to pick up on the second lap. Congratulations to Jeff Gordon on the pole for the Pepsi 400. Qualifying continues on speed throughout much of the season, but we switch the racing coverage over to NBC and TNT Sunday on NBC. 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, NASCAR Nextel Cup Racing Live, the Tropicana 400, presented by Meyer. Here's a guy that was awfully quick in practice earlier, Jeff Gordon, going for four consecutive butt poles. He was fourth quickest in a 29.31 earlier. A little early in the lap, but looks pretty good right light. now. Lost it a little bit there, center off. We've seen a lot of cars do that, like Elliott Sadler. Really carry a lot of speed in the corner, but you lose it coming off, but it's coming back just a little bit down the back straightaway. Gordon started outside pole here last year. Throws up just a little bit right in the center, but now he brings it back to second. Now it's going green. Did he get it? Yes. Got it. But how many times have we seen that with Jeff Gordon? It's like he gets it from off turn four back to the start finish line. One and done, too, guys. God, do you blame him? Great job. Give him something to work for there. Well, you know, they don't put the start-finish line down in the middle of the corner. No, they don't. <laughs> there you see Casey Kane going. Yep. Man, how do you do that? Gordon is going for four straight bud poles. The last time that happened was 1981 when Darrell Waltrip won four straight poles and won all four of those races. Tropicana 400 on NBC. He's about to lose it. I don't think we're going to make it. Jeff Gordon has won three of the last five pole positions here at Bristol. He has been on the front row for the last five straight Bristol races. And Pace Chase says he's in good shape for another. Yeah, watch on his car. Watch how the front of the car just fights to the racetrack getting off the corner. That is just impressive if you can get a car to do that. Yeah, that is just fantastic the way that car is going around the corner. First one under 15 seconds today. Almost, almost lost it right there. 14-9-3-0 on his first lap. The bailout on the second lap. And Jeff Gordon is the new leader in butt pole qualifying. Jeff Gordon on the pole for tomorrow night's race. We'll talk to you at 7 Eastern. Race him, line him up, race him tomorrow night. Jeff Gordon, 24th in practice, matching his car number. Only two starts here, worse than 14. And no, he's never won here, but he's won almost everywhere else. Only one of four tracks. What a great problem to have, but he did right. win a Bush Series race here. And a USAC race here. This does not look like a great lap going for Jeff Gordon, 24 car. Just having to pedal it right through the center of the turn just can't get back to the throttle and that cures your lap time around this turn. He maybe he's not one here but in his 12 cup starts 10 top 10 finishes. 16th on his first lap 27 32. That was better. Looked a lot better. That was better. Looking yeah. a whole lot better. Now he's starting to lose ground like he got off turn two somewhat good. And the reason this is jumping around as we talked earlier we have so many cars now that 31 has qualified. Pretty good lap. Little transmission glitch there because uh, Gordon's been right up on top of it and he goes to the pole. 2693. Yeah, buddy, great job. 693. Great job there, guys. Picked up four tenths on that second lap. Oh, I'm so proud of you guys. That baby was awesome. Well, at least that first lap, but that baby can't be on that second lap. All right, Here boys. He is. Jeff Gordon. Gordon been waiting on the final car qualify. I think they probably saved the best for last. Four wins here at Infineon. On four poles. His average finish ninth. He's the all-time road course winner in Next Hell Cup. Eight times he's gone to victory lane. Teammate Jimmy Johnson looking. As Jeff Ford takes the green flag. Yeah, last year set on the buck pole, won the race, led 92 of 110 laps. The only laps he didn't lead was through the sequence of pit stops. Do you go on board? Tell us what you think of his lap. So up the hill. Good. Nice and smooth. Getting his marks. Tracker's coming down now as he goes through the short chute, headed toward turn seven. 
I think it was okay. I'll give you. I'll give you a nine on that. Jimmy Johnson trying to hold on for his first pole since Dover, June 2004. Here's where you. Uh, here's where you're gonna have to make up some time. You got to come down through here. Don't get loose. He's gaining on a DW. It's picking up. Yeah, this is where this fastest part of the track. Down the hill. Swing out a little wide right here. Now get the curve right there. Hook it a little bit. Gas it. See him working the front tires. It's going to be really, it's going to be close. Right there, if he can get through turn 11, this is going to be important. Entrance right here through the middle. See if he can do it. Can he get that power down? Yeah, he got it down. I think he did it. It's going to be close, though. He Real close. Down to the line. Let's see if he can knock his teammate off the he, pole. He's got it, boys. He does it. 75.950 seconds to Johnson's 96.079 with a new track, track record. record. Barely his own track record. Doug Richard says they've got a lot of work to do as this man is on the pole again. In the DuPont Chevrolet. Pretty good in practice. Uh, not terribly happy with his car, but pretty fast. But, Daryl, I tell you, I stayed up here the entire hour and a half, and, and I know he wasn't happy with his car, but his car actually looked good during that entire practice session. Looks it looks real good right now. Looks better now. 15 <laughs> 29. He was fast at practice. He, I, I tell you, he and uh, Steve Latart, Jeff kept telling Steve what it needed, and, and, and Steve was really. Do it. Slows down on lap two, but lap one right now will be good enough. They have really got their communication down good, is what I'm trying to say. Steve and, and Jeff. 29, really T1, pole. Gordon trying for his fifth. Way to go. That thing was awesome. <laughs> He's happy now. Yeah. This would be, if it holds up, his fifth bud pole at Bristol. He has 28 starts here. He leads all active all right, drivers. Man, great job. Great job today, guys. With a total. You guys are awesome. Proud of you. Jeff Gordon ties Bobby Allison for fifth on the all time NASCAR pole winning list. Jeff Gordon in the DuPont Chevy. He has three third place finishes here and two poles. And we all know this is one of the three tracks where he has not won. Did win a Bush race here, but has not won a Cup race. And right now, his first lap, 27.55. This group, they've just been on their mark so well this year on qualifying. They have the two butt poles, but they also have five top five starts this year in 2007. And he's looking like he's working on number six here on lap two. I think he'll do it. I'll tell you, he's fast here, man. But I got three, four. I don't know how good I got through one, two, though. Well, it was good enough. Baby, 27-0-4, pole. Oh. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Big Daddy. Back in town. Wins the pole. Jeff Gordon in the DuPont Chevrolet. He has two career poles here, 1996 and 2000. Or excuse me, those are his two wins. First lap's not going to be all that memorable either. He just drove down into turn one again. Way, way too hard. Looked to me like in the car went up the hill. Now he's made a lot of good time up down here in turn three and four. See where that puts him. Now with the Impala, which is Chevy's version of the car tomorrow, he has started no worse than third in the three races so far. Can't seem to get the car at the bottom down there in one and two. Now this is a much better lap. That was a pretty good first lap yeah. though, Darrell. 24 and of course we sat down with Jeff last week and he told us he has to make himself say, this is the Impala, I can't overdrive it. 2138. He beats Almendinger by wow. well over two times. You're in a 2164, 2138. Unbelievable. That's what we're looking for. <laughs> that thing was awesome, guys. You guys are blowing me away. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> and don't care. I'll just keep driving this thing. Our spring winner here, guys, Jeff Gordon. Started second here in the spring, but brought it home number one. And then a year ago, sat on the pole to finish second. So a couple of good runs here the last two trips. Casey Kane is the quickest at a 28-27. Tony Stewart and Kyle Busch, second and third. Jeff, he eased it down into turn yes, one, did. but he picked that throttle up quickly. Carries that speed down the back straightaway. Let's see if he goes with the same philosophy through three and four. 
I think this is going to be a pole run. If it not, it's going to be awfully close, man. He got a good great lap right off turn four. Good job, guys. 200 water. 28-25. He knew it coming off the of turn four. It was a good lap. Jeff Gordon out on track right now as he is Here a seven-time pole sitter, and this is looking good. Here we go. It's looking real good, you know, and he was talking about how the fast guys in practice were not at the top, so he didn't know what to expect. He's going to oh, be he's got real this. happy with this. Wow, he's tenth of a second. And he's coming across. Four, I don't think I got your one, two good enough. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you did fine. 28.19 seconds. P, P1. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Not bad. I guess watching that TV paid off. Yeah. <laughs> so proud of you guys, and I'm too distracted right now to look at my... <laughs> he was 33rd in practice. Yeah. I mean, and we were looking at each other going, ooh, what have they yeah. got? And I said it stopped the show. This is a guy that really needs a big weekend here, and he's got a good start at it right here. He was fast in practice. Fourth quick. He can pick up a little bit here. Yep. I don't know if the track picked up or we just got to the guys that were ready to try to go win this pole. Don't need a big corner here. Yeah, he's already a tenth and a half off. Hard to make that up in this end. He's coming back though. He might get away. What a run through that corner. Wow. Yeah, you are the pole sitter. That's how you do it right there. That was Woo! awesome. You guys are awesome. What a day. <laughs> what a car, man. That's awesome. Cooling down, and these tires, they just do not give up grip. So Carl Edwards was right behind Joey Logano. Kevin Harvick has jumped up to third. He was the only car from the Stuart Haas organization to advance to round three. And we keep an eye now on Jeff Gordon, and who he's was in quickest in round two, and so far so good on his lap of record. He got down into turn one in the green, but he's coming off of turn two back in the green. Yeah, he, he kind of went red there for a period, middle of the corner, but as he came off of turn two and down the back straightaway, he has really picked it up. You know what he did, Adam? He didn't overdrive the corner. We've heard several guys say, you get down there, drive the car too hard in the corner, you will chatter the front end up a little bit. And right now, you're seeing a master at work, and we're still green coming back to the start finish line. And it's gaining, it's gaining. No problem at all. Jeff Gordon to the top, 206.5. 558 miles per hour, a 34.85. Get you some of that. Back-to-back -back poles from Watkins Glen in Michigan. Uh, we're having a lot of fun right now. That's pretty lined up back there. If they can complete a, if they can get a lap started, they're going to be in great shape. Drivers in the back must cross the start-finish line before that clock gets to zero. Let me tell or you, their lap will not count. And that's going to be close. We're at 23, 22, 20. Uh, that's going to be close for some of them to make it. Being well, the rabbit, Martin Truex may have the right strategy. We're down to 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. Oh, nine, it's going to be close. Eight, at the back. Seven, six, five, five four, three, two. Time is expired. They made it. So Everybody this will be the money lap. This will count. Well, I think if you watch that group right there, led by Casey Kane in the five, that's probably where the pole center for the Daytona 500 is going to come oh, from. That, that group's in the catbird seat because they got three cars in front of them, and they're coming up on the back of them pretty quick. That group should put down the fast lap. As long as they don't start slicing and dicing through three and four. No, I think they got it. I think they know they're in the best spot right now. Just stay right there, draft up on the cars in front of you, and you're going to have a pretty quick time here, I would say. Just look how quick they're pulling up on those three drivers in front of them. But, and, and it's really quite, it's almost perfect. It's almost perfect the way they timed that out. Those guys did. Good job. Truex now, Earnhardt, Kane, Hamlin, Gordon. Gordon Johnson. How about that? <laughs> oh. Jeff Gordon. We'll <laughs> 48 24, baby. Love it, love it, love it. Awesome job, buddy. That is unbelievable. Man, that's awesome. That's so cool, guys. In the offseason, Jeff Gordon announced this will be his final season. He was emphatic last week, saying, 
this will be his final Daytona Speed Weeks. <laughs> and he'll start the 500 from the pole. Jeff Gordon in his final Daytona 500 will sit on the pole for the second time in his career. He has won the Great American Race three times. He'll try for a fourth at his swan song season Thursday on FS1 for Kenny Wallace, Michael Waltrip, the entire gang. I'm Chris Myers. Thanks for being a part of NASCAR on Fox. Have a great week. Stay warm. We'll see you next weekend right here. We're down to close to a minute and a half, and we still have six drivers to make their run in this final round. Here's Jeff Gordon, the 24 car, seeing some green with Jeff compared to his teammate, Dale Earnhardt Jr. See, Gordon has won a pole at every Sprint Cup track except Kansas, Kentucky, and Las Vegas. It's going to be a great a lap. Great lap. Oh, boy. Good. Oh, boy. She's good. Oh, yes. 27-73. She's good. That's my boy. <laughs> That's a guy Larry and I both said we looked at the lineup, we said, watch that 24. How about I mean what a season this is starting off as for Jeff Gordon. <laughs> two poles uh, two out of the three races, the man been on the pole. And uh, only got two left. Yeah, I don't you know if that's the best you can do, I think I'd retire. Here's the deal. Jeff Gordon gets to go 196 miles an hour. Everybody else? 24. 24. Thank you, Jeff. Jeff Gordon, see if he can secure the pole here with this run. In his final season in the Sprint Cup Series, final full-time season, Jeff Gordon by a lot in the green going off into turn one. He won the pole for the Daytona 500. Remember, that was not single car qualifying. That oh, was the multiple car knockout qualifying format. My, he, he's just constantly building speed. He was good in one and two. He's gaining speed in straight line speed down the back straightaway. Uh, this car is absolutely spot on, well prepared. He was fastest in round one by more than three tenths, 32 one hundredths. Well, he's going to be, he's got two in the bank now and gaining. This car is just so fast and really fast in a straight line and it doesn't slow down in the corners. This car is just really, really free and running fast. Look at this time. Oh, Still good. Let's see. Yeah, you got it. Good job, guys. Awesome job, guys. That's all you right there. All you guys. Yep. Big cheer from the crowd by 28 one hundredths of a second. Jeff Gordon, third on the all time list, has won his 80th career poll in the Sprint Cup Series. His last poll came at Las Vegas. This is his third of the season. 23 straight years, Jeff Gordon has won at least one poll. They're going 2.66 miles and 14 one thousandths of a second separate the top two right now. And this looks like a great lap for Jeff Gordon, building already. Already in the green, continuing to trend the right direction. You mentioned earlier this year, it was three tenths of a second that he was faster than his teammate. He's working on that now. I mean, he's good right now. He's a solid tenth right to the middle of the corner. He's going to be a tenth of a second faster and still has, you know, half the racetrack to go. Much like Hedger Motorsports here, Jeff Gordon still had has found that elusive win of this year, its final year in Spring Cup competition. You know, a pole here, it, it's I mean, all of these tracks are, are sweet to go back to, but this right here, what a dominating run right here for the 24. Yes, it is. The last race at Talladega Super Speedway. And all the 24 fans on their feet celebrating. Jeff Gordon wins the pole again. The only Super Speedway pole that Jeff Gordon didn't win in 2015 was rained out. Good job there, fellas. Good job today.